this problem, we want to show two examples of applications of Taylor series. So for the first, we want to use it to simplify and solve an indeterminate form limit using Taylor series, as opposed to using little tells where to do so. So for this, we have the limit here of cosine 2x minus 1 over x squared e to the x. We can check if we plug in 0, we get 0 over 0 for this. So little tells it would apply. We have to do so twice to get to the answer. So instead of doing that, we're going to use the Taylor series approach to solve it. So using Taylor series, we know that cosine of x has the series given by negative 1 to the n, n from 0 to infinity, over 2n factorial x to the 2n. And e to the x has the Taylor series given by n from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So that means that for the expression, this limit, x going to 0, cosine of 2x minus 1 over x squared e to the x, I can write out the first few terms of each series to approximate what's going to happen here. So this is limit x goes to 0. Cosine of 2x, the first couple of terms there are a 1 when I plug in n equals 0. For n equals 1, I get a negative. I will see a 2x to the 2 over 2 factorial plus a 2x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus terms that have higher powers of x in them. And then a minus 1 from the extra minus 1 on the top divided by x squared times the first couple terms of e to the x series. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. Up here, the 1s will cancel. And so what I'm left with is a negative 4x squared over 2 plus a... 16x to the fourth over 24 plus terms with higher powers of x. And on the bottom, this is all still a limit as x goes to zero. I see an x squared plus an x cubed plus an x to the fourth over two, again, plus higher powers of x. I can then cancel an x squared from every term here to give me now a limit as x goes to zero of negative 2 plus 2 thirds x squared plus higher powers of x again, divided by 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, again plus higher powers of x. But this limit I can now take because if I send all the x's to 0, I'm still up with numbers on top and bottom. So this here is minus 2, and that is the limit we're trying to compute for this problem because all the x terms go away in the limit as x goes to 0. And for the second problem here, we want to use the first two terms in the McLaurin series for cosine of x squared to approximate the integral of 0 to 1 of cosine of x squared dx. So to do this, I will need the McLaurin series for cosine of x squared. So we know, as before, that cosine of x has McLaurin series given by n from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n factorial x to the 2n. So if I plug in x squared here, that means cosine of x squared is going to be sum n from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n factorial times x to the 4n, because I'm putting x squared in there, so I end up with a 4n. Which means the first two terms here are 1 when I plug n equals 0. And for n equals 1, I see a negative x to the 4th over 2. The next term would be plus x to the 8th over 4 factorial. But for this problem, we only want the first two terms, so I do not need this one. So this means that I can approximate the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine of x squared dx by instead integrating just the first two terms of the Maclaurin series. Integral 0, 1 of 1 minus x to the fourth over 2 dx. And that's a polynomial, so we know how to work that out. This is x minus x to the fifth over 10 from 0 to 1, which is 1 minus 1 tenth minus 0 or 9 tenths. If we use an online calculator to actually work out this integral, we get the actual value as 0 0.90452, which is very, very close to our approximation here. So we really only need that many terms to get a decent approximation here to the value of this integral. So there's two examples of how you can use Taylor series and Maclaurin series in a variety of ways to solve problems that normally you wouldn't think could use methods to solve them. Both doing indeterminate limits instead of L'Hopital's rule and approximately the integrals could be done using these Taylor and Maclaurin series 
and as being a, a way to get a pretty good approximation to these things, especially when we're trying to use computers to solve these kinds of problems.